Wellness family, this is Shofar from Full Show Energy Work and Full Show Health. And we're here today to talk to you about harnessing your sexual desire. And for many of us, our sexual desires are some things that leak out. You know what I'm saying? We're scrolling through and you see an attractive person and you go in, we go into a state of wanting or lust from a place of scarcity. Uh, you know, we're feeling that these different things, these things that we desire sexually may not be able to be fulfilled. Maybe you have some type of kink or fantasy and um, your the attachment to it is causing a leak of sorts sometimes. So how do we harness our power? Because this is our creative force. This is how we get shit done. It is sexual energy that brought us to the planet, that basically brought every living thing one way or the other. Uh, even if it's a one cell being, it still did a sex of sorts to be here on this plane of existence. So how do we hone that energy? How do we harness it to have the best life? Let's talk about it. So first off, let's look at this word horny. It's uh, often a line word. word. It's like it's something wrong sometimes to be horny or he's a horned dog or just so horny. It's like something that, you know, can't be fulfilled and is kind of sometimes associated with being dirty or something like that. So what is it even, what is the etymology? What, it, what does that term even mean? So when we think about horny, is literally what I think about is a horn or a goat, a creature like that, that are known to have high sexual desires or to be very virile, to be very, uh, uh, have a lot of vitality sexually. And what you can think of is like the semen in the nuts, in the balls, moving around so much and it's causing like a, a fire to go throughout the body or the, the ovaries and they're vibrating in such a way and they wanna be moved on and it's going throughout the whole body. That's one way to think about that sexual desire. Uh, some of us, we have what they call a low libido. And then some of us have a high libido. And what we want to do is learn how to balance that out, right? And not have it be too much or too little. And so how do we do that? Well, first off, let's look again, like I say, at that word horny. A horn is, of course, a bone, right? That's a type of bone that grows from certain creatures. Now. As I did the research for this, uh, that's different than antlers. Antlers are like what would you find in deer, elk, uh, caribou, and they tend to grow in the male of the species. Although in caribou, the female may have uh, horns as well. Uh, you notice also that they have different branches. Uh, with a horn, it's a little bit different. So giraffes have horns that are covered by hair and flesh, and Rhinoceros have a horn as well. And in many species of different antelopes or goats, males and females might have horns, uh, but not always. In other words, there's exceptions. So what am I getting at here with that? What we see with the animal kingdom is that the horns are somehow connected to our sexual energy. They're connected to how we show up and how we want to be how we want to project or how we want to be received by our sexual and creative energy, our primal force, right? And uh, so, in other words, they're rooted in the corporal experience and they come up out through the crown. In fact, one can say that the horns even create a crown of sorts. You know, it's like having a crown of your own when you have. Uh, these horns coming out. And so I think that's why many different, uh, you know, creatures or beings of different sorts are often depicted with horns. I'll go into that more in a second. But so that's the first thing that we want to see is that when we talk about ho being horny, or we have to look at the, et the etymology or etymology of the word horn, and we see that is a connection to the primal sexual creative force. 
And the second thing is that it's a projection of sorts, right? That is projecting up out of the head. And I think that's very powerful that is, it comes from the fire of those ovaries wanting, you know, to be moved on, which then goes out into the vagina and the, the, the vulva and the womb space there, that, that energy calling in, sending off scents and pheromones and everything, uh, making itself available to be moved on by the masculine, by the male. And the male in those balls, you know, with all that, all that energy moving around and swimming and wanting to move on something, the ball, you know, the, the energy going through the balls into the shaft and out into the, the vagina, right? Into the womb. And it goes all throughout the being, the, the sexual energy from the ovaries, the sexual energy from the balls, the, te the testes, goes all throughout the being, whatever being it is, throughout their flesh, and causes them to make certain decisions, it causes them to, to have certain what thoughts, what are thoughts, different pictures, mental pictures, and affirmations or sounds that, that they're giving out or hearing, tuning in smelling the pheromones so the hormones the hormones that may cause us all to be a whore you see the word hormones comes from taking uh from the latin uh, root to take action action ion you know i've talked about before with the ion words their exchange of energy a charged particle so a, the hormones causing us to be whores, a male whore, a, man, a, a, a woman whore. It comes up through our body, up through the through the spine of what of the creature, and causes the the crown or the horn to be displayed or to grow. You know, in some creatures it may be the hair, others is feathers, perhaps. Uh, you know, many times, but. There's a lot of times things going on with a lot of different type of creatures with their crown or their head, their dome, their ori, right? And so that's another thing is that the horns or being horny comes uh, from that is an, it's looking to be a sexual expression. And it's also a projection. It is how we project ourselves out, uh, a projection of what it is that you're wanting to call in so to be projected onto that is the, the the yearning of the feminine energy and then the masculine energy it is a protrusion uh it is a show of how you want to project yourself sexually and creatively in this world again it's central emotional exchange so we're not just talking about the genitals although it does include that it is also just talking about what it is that you're here on this planet to be, that is part of your horniness. And you want to have your hormones, uh, your pheromones, uh, you know, bringing uh, and, and moving through your body so that you move in a certain way uh, on this planet and so that life is receptive to you. So let's look a little bit about like you often, Satan or Lucifer uh, is depicted is having horns. What's that about? We are told that this is a being or it stands for a, a state of consciousness that we all have in us to different degrees that can override us, that can be a fire, like a, a hell fire, a, a fire that, that, that is so overwhelming that it's burning shit down. And I talk about it in my other video, um, the that sexual desire is a force of nature. Well, with any force of nature, if a fucking volcano just explodes and erupts and basically ejaculates all over a village, that's not going to be good uh, for the villagers. Uh, but if it's if it's no one around or whatever, and it, it can be in harmony, ne next thing you know, you have a new island. You see, so it all depends, but. That sexual energy, that creative force, when there's negative thoughts or limiting beliefs, false belief systems, false BS, 
behind that sexual creative force, now you have a force of nature that is going to do some dumb shit, some damage in the environment, some something that's going to fuck up society or your own life, your marriage, your, your family, your own health even. So this is when our sexual energy can be devil-ish. Whether you believe in a being, uh, you know, some spiritual force or whatever that is opposed to you in some way, uh, truly, if you are truly a divine being in, in alignment, there can never be anything opposed to you because you are the ultimate force when you are in alignment with source itself, right? So there is nothing to oppose you when you know that deep enough in your bones, in your ovaries, in your balls, with your breath, with your blood. Ashe? That's why they say that having an idle mind, what is an idle mind? An idle mind is like having a false idol, having a, a false idol, something outside of ourselves that we think is greater and we give our sexual and creative energy over to it or lusting and desire. I mean, lusting and wanting, not desiring. Uh, I think desire and passion. Uh, again, it's all semantics, but I think these are quote unquote positive words, whereas when we want and long and 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 stuff like that then that is an energy that comes from scarcity and lack not from a state of abundance desire and passion to me is like being in alignment with appreciation and having gratitude that you can feel in your physical body so but having an idle mind a mind that is idling and has negative thoughts uh uh you know from the past or about the future uh that are fucking up you presently, um, uh, like an idle engine that's idling and it won't start, it won't actually go anywhere. It's not getting anything done. Um, and we do that in part by having idols, by having these or having certain ideals, ideals and ideas. So having an ideal that's really not in alignment with how you are ideally made to what it is that you're here to do on the planet. Having ideas does not in accordance, not in congruence with your right angle. Aho. So we need to do the work around our sexual sensual energy uh, so that we can be a force of nature with it. Don't be like Loki, you know, that, that Loki, the son of uh, the, the son of Odin, the, the, the brother of Thor, notice he wears horns because he's a trickster. See, he has the sexual energy, but he, he does it for mischief, right? And then, or you, and we also don't want to be like Hellboy, the, the, the comic book Hellboy. Notice how he cuts his horns off, his sexual energy, so that he can fit in. Fuck all of that. Be who you are. Who, who it is that you, you know, wear the colors that, that you are supposed to be. Speak how you're supposed to be, you know. Fucking feel your ovaries and your balls. And let your presence, your pre essence be felt. Amen. And so never shave your horns. Never shave your horniness. Let people think that you're a quote unquote whore. You want to have sexual energy. That's how you get shit done. But you don't want it to be leaking. You don't want it to be stoked up so, far, so high that you burn all, all the good things in your life down. Learn how to master keeping this, the, the fire stoked at a level that is good for you. And that is how you become the GOAT, the greatest of all time, uh, is what, you know, the, the, the acronym that people use for, you know, like say in the world of, you know, basketball, is it LeBron, Will Chamberlain, you know, Kobe, uh, Steph Curry, or Michael Jordan, and many other names get thrown in there. Okay. You know, um, that's one thing that the, the, the masculine mind can do is create these hierarchies, right? To me, is all of them. Because without one of those guys, then the, the game of basketball is totally different. So I don't like to let my mind even fall into that. Like, I enjoy all of these different beings for different reasons. Uh, in order to become the greatest of all time, understand the greatest that you can. You can be. So I would say the whole greatest of, of, uh, of all time thing, that's like, again, I spoke about being a legend. Fuck all of that. Don't worry about being a legend and having statues up and, 
and trophies and all that shit. Who gives a shit? What about being a uh, part of this grand orgasmic dream? God, you know, this grand orgasmic dream and leaving a legacy for those people that you love that will outlive you and those people that you may not even know uh, and making this, this mother heart greater. And the last thing I want to point out about with your, you know, how to harness your sexual desire is understanding, like when we say that we, that things are that being horny, uh, we already talked about it being a fire and everything. Think about the horn itself too, is that it's used a lot of times as a wind instrument. A wind instrument, the breath. I talk about so much about how powerful, how needed the breath is. And so being able to harness your sexual energy, your horniness, and make it productive, making sure that the fire is not too great, not too small, but just fucking right, using the breath. Notice how fire and air depend on each other in a certain way. The word air, by the way, A-I-R, Ra is in it. If you go backwards, R and A, Ra, which is the sun again. In Hebrew, the word Ruach, which means spirit, it means breath, it means wind. It also has Ruach, R-U-A-C-H. It also has Ra in it. So there's a divine connection between breath and air, air and breath. Um, I'm sorry, a divine connection between fire and air and air and fire, the breath. So actually breath has raw in it too. So with that, knowing that your horniness is, is like a wind instrument. Notice how the word wind, you flip it, you have mind, the breath and the mind, the mind and breath, they are intimately connected. Remember what I, if you haven't watched, go and watch the, the, the video Quantum SEX because it is a coin spinning. All of these ideas and concepts is not one or, or the other. They're all linked in together in one way or the other. That coin is constantly spinning. So put on, putting all these things together and then an instrument, something that is an instrument is something that can make a sound, that can uh, uh, make music, that can praise or raise the vibration of things, right? These are some of the things, it's a tool. Your horniness is a tool. It's not something that's working against you. And it is a it is an instrument to be played. You use the breath to play your horniness. Amen. So with that, y'all, I just wanted to go into that a little bit about the how to harness your sexual and sensual uh, uh, energy. And, um, you know, that force of nature, that SEX, Central Emotional Exchange. And uh, if you have any questions, reach out to me. And again, I'm Shofar from Fosho Energy Work and Fosho Health. Uh, my lady and me, we do SEX, Central Emotional uh, Exchange work with couples and singles. I also have a book, Sacred Orgasmic Living. And we have webinars. Uh, sex to S-E-X. If you want to learn how to go from genital, just strictly genital-based sex to expanding to S-E-X, Central Emotional Exchange, then those webinars are a great way. You can check the links down below. And if you like this video, again, like, subscribe, share, uh, maybe leave a comment down below. And with that, y'all, I appreciate y'all. Keep uh, that S-E-X in your life. Keep shining. Keep evolving and do so exponentially, oneness.